Hello everyone, we're going to cover a few things today that have been in the last course set update. Uh, there's been a few things that have been brought up to me, and I'm going to cover those right now. We're going to use our Dragon Breed as our test example game here. We're going to go into display options for the canoe borders. And I have it set to 4-3, and the Galaxy one right here. And if you notice, by default, 4-3 is the standard setting for the NES SNES Classic. That is exactly why it is now the default setting for RetroArch. You'll see this in action in a moment here. But I'm going to exit back and open up our Dragon Breed, a great Irem game. And I've showed this in a few other videos. And watch what happens when I start the game. Notice how it has not taken up the entire screen. The way it used to be here, let me show you this. You go into RetroArch Settings, Video. You're going to just remember this option because it's going to be very, very important to remember for the future reference of yourself here and your personal setup. I'm going to toggle to the off position right now. Then it has no true resolution that's going to follow. It's pretty much going to fill out its own aspect ratio. So right now, I'm resuming. Then I'm going to go back into RetroArch options here. Notice how we do not have the canoe border. So I'm going to go into settings here. And remember this option as well. This is a very, very important option and a fun thing to play around with. On-screen display. On-screen overlay. And simply click display overlay on. And then watch what happens when I resume. Notice how part of the game is basically obscured by the border. That is why we have the integer setting enabled here. But let me uh, play this for a second to show you this in action. See how it has like a good inch of the screen that's all screwy? That is a bug due to the very, very different aspect ratios that go between all of the different cores. So if I go back into video here, and I go back to integer scale, and I turn it back on, then I resume. It fits in there way better. But in addition to that, I can go back to the on-screen display, on screen overlay and I'm going to change the overlay preset to a uh, Super Mario Brothers 2 overlay and resume see how much better it fits with integer scale on so if you have uh, certain borders that the game don't fit well in turn integer scale on And another thing, um, I'll show you briefly here. We're going to quit RetroArch here. Say you're running PSP. Some people have said they've had problem running uh, PSP and changing the aspect ratio to 16.9. I have RetroArch added as an icon here, but I'm going to load uh, Ultimate Ghosts and Goblins per normal here. And once I had the game loaded, just watch what I do. I'm going to go into RetroArch Options, Video, go back to Integer Scale, I'm going to turn it off. Then I'm going to go back to the Aspect Ratio under Video, and I'm going to change it from 4.3 to 16.9. Then I'm going to go to Quick Menu, Save core overrides. Now when I quit and exit, it'll be saved that way. So I could even uh, load another PSP game here. From the dummy folder here. Just It doesn't matter which game. I'll load Hero of Sparta here. It's at 16.9 with Integer disabled. And I'm simply going to exit RetroArch. And one thing I've noticed with the memory changes in cache clearing, games exit PPSSP 
quite a bit faster than they previously did in my very first test video. That was a quick, quick exit there. Another thing you could do is you could also add from Hashi2, you know, in my extras folder, the Clover SNES or Clover NES as a game. And you can go right to RetroArch here and do global changes to video, audio, and all that good stuff. And then simply go to configurations and save the current configuration. But right now we're going to exit. And we're going to do a little test of yet another nifty thing I'm going to put out in the next update. We're going to try out Open Bore, something people have been asking me about for a while, and it runs on the SNES Classic, NES Classic, but not very fast, but it's still incredibly fun to play around with. We're going to try Beats of Rage here for a moment. And unfortunately, He-Man and G.I. Joe do not work. It has to be due to a uh, graphic card issue as far as plugins are concerned. So we're going to try Beats of Rage here for a moment. As you see, it's not incredibly fast, but of course you can do a uh, frame skip it if you want to boost it just a little bit. But it looks really, really cool and it's fun to play. I've tried a few of these out and I'll show you a couple of them in this test video. So this is Beats of Rage. Which is basically Streets of Rage with a King of Fighters reskin. I'm going to exit to RetroArch now. I'm going to try out a couple more of these games. And I'll post a little tutorial on how to properly run the open board games in my next release. Which will probably be out tomorrow or the next day. I still have a few more things I'm working on. And of course I'm going to listen to feedback as far as the integer skill. And anything else in the last course set update. So let's check out another one of these uh, games here. How about we try out this nifty Akari Warriors uh, open board game. And open board is basically open beats of rage. There are a bunch of modified games that are based on already awesome licenses that have been made before. You have everything from Double Dragon to Final Fight to Golden Axe to Mega Man. Double, you know, just many, many different games. So we're trying out a nifty Akari Warriors one here. One thing I really like about these games is that some of them have some pretty awesome violence in them. Just watch what happens when I get my hands on a gun in this game. And you have to add these a very special way which I will cover in my tutorial video. I'll do an entire video devoted to this. I was really, really hoping I could get He-Man and uh, G.I. Joe running. I might still try to work on those. But watch what happens when I pick up this nifty gun here. And I'm playing a side scroll and Beats of Rage style Akari Warriors game. And this is incredible. I can deal with the, the frame right here. And of course I could change it if I'd like to. But watch how gruesomely the people die as you shoot them. They literally hunch over and drop in a pool of blood. This is definitely different than your typical brawler game. This is a Kari Warriors, really cool game here. And I'm going to play around with it, trying to tweak this to get it to run a little bit faster. I'm going to exit and we're going to try out another game here. We have a couple more of these uh, games to check out. And there's also one other request that I'm going to very briefly go into. Uh, a controller issue for a particular arcade game. And I'll cover that at the tail end of this video for that individual. So we're going to check out a really, really cool Mega Man style game. And it has something that's very, very cool. If you've ever played the Psycho Fox hack on Sega Master System... They replaced the main characters with characters such as Link and Samus Aran, etc. There's a similar thing going on in this Beats of Rage Mega Man game here. 
there's a very, very nifty character select, and you can pick many, many different characters from different games, and just watch this in action here. So I'm going to the load screen here. I start out with Mega Man, but I could also pick characters like AVGN, you know, Angry Video Game Nerd, Scrooge McDuck, Stinko Man, Deropi. She's from the other Nintendo Mega Man style game. I think it's Cryon Quest. Spiritisha, I'm not sure what she's from, or he's from. Shovel Knight, obviously. Dragonborn. Ezio. Snake from Metal Gear. Dante from, you know what? <laughs> Devil May Cry. Kratos, Vegeta, I mean there's a, just a ton of these to play around with here. Say I want to play with uh, Samus Aran. Like I said, there's a really nifty uh, hack on Sega Master System of Psycho Fox where you could do things like this. But look at this, this is really cool. I'm playing a nice little hack of Mega Man using Samus Aran. And some of the characters really do have weapons that are a little bit similar to their counterparts in their games. Like, if I play Sonic the Hedgehog, I can actually do the spin attack on enemies. This is pretty cool, and I'm, I'm really enjoying the open board stuff, even though it doesn't run incredibly fast. But, uh, these are a few of the Beats of Rage uh, open board games, and I'm going to cover the tail end of this video with a specific main game that... People have been asking me about and having control woes with. That's going to be Tubin, a midway game. And I'm going to show you two different ways you can run it. So that's the tail end of this video here. And any arcade fans, stick around for that. And we're going to check that out in one second once I exit to the main GUI here. So I'm going to open up uh, RetroArch as an option here. And then I'm going to load MAME 2003 from Low Core. Then I'm going to load content. Go to my dummy folder. My MAME folder. <clears throat> We're going to check out Tube in here. It's one of them wacky games that has really goofy controls and... Some of the chords simply do not play well with these controls, so I'm going to show you how to run it. Load Archive, MAME 2003. And I'm going to go back into Video Options here. And I'm going to turn Integer Skill off for this particular game. And I'm going to resume. And say, for instance, you'd like to have the border, you could also, for borders, um, go back to where I said, on-screen display, on-screen overlay, and toggle it on again if you'd like to for the default canoe borders. This is off by default now because more cores play well without the borders on. So this is a personal choice, and again, based on feedback, I can re-enable this if applicable but most of you have been very very happy with the update so I'm going over to integer skill in the display overlay section here just so you guys un and gals understand that but we're going to go back into uh, tube in here start the game you'll notice when you start playing the game there are no controls whatsoever so I'm going to go into R2 input this game and this is with MAME 2003 notice how there's a uh, paddle forward in a paddle backwards. So I'm actually going to click the A button on my controller and I'm going to configure these four buttons in particular. So player one, I'm going to do the paddle forward. And I'm just configuring these all one by one. And then I'm going to configure the throw button and I'll put that onto uh, L1. And then I'm simply going to resume. Now I can play this awesome game. <laughs> so much better with controls. And of course you can play the NES version of this too.
And of course, the other way you can play this, I think I'm going to save that for another day, but uh, hope you enjoyed the video and there'll be more to come. But I'll show you other bypasses for Midway and Ballet Games, but right there was a tube and definitely check it out. And feel free to give me feedback on the integer scaling as well as the display configuration for the canoe borders. But hopefully you guys and gals are all happy with these changes. They are for the better, but feedback will definitely make a tremendous difference in what comes out in future releases. So keep me, keep me posted with the feedback.